Hello and welcome to Idea Gen's 17 Days of Sustainability. Today we are very happy to have with us Dr. Sonia Ballart, leading sustainability solutions for IBM. Sonia, welcome. Welcome. Hi, John. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for being with us today. We greatly appreciate it and can't wait to hear the insights you bring. To, to get started, what does energy transition mean? And what do net zero declarations on the part of the government and companies mean? Yeah, really, energy transition. What a strange concept, right? We use energy every day, and yet we are in transition with our energy. What we were used to for the past 100 or so years is an energy system with coal, gas, and oil. And those are called fossil fuels. And as we all know, they, um, they, they produce greenhouse gases, which heat up the atmosphere and create a problem for the climate, a climate emergency even in some parts of the world. So it's really necessary that we get out of those types of energies into new ones. And that's what's called the energy transition. And to speed this up, companies and governments have declared net zero. And net zero means that we will stop really producing more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that warms the planet. And we will try to neutralize whatever we still emit so that really the sum is zero. If we still emit CO2, we'll make sure we also take it out of the atmosphere by some technological innovation. That's really what energy transition and net zero mean. That's fascinating and something that we certainly wanna strive for. And so does that mean that we will only use electricity in the future? Is it possible to electrify all transport, heating, and industry? Yeah, so electrification, using electricity as a, a source of energy, is going to play a very big role in the energy transition, but it cannot fill all the needs. There are sectors of industry which really need different sources of energy because they need a higher energy density, higher temperatures, for instance or also electrification might not reach every place that we need it because we need to transport it and that's difficult for electricity. So therefore, electricity, although very important in the energy transition is not the only answer. And there are new sources of energy needed, such as hydrogen. Um, there's also more technological innovation needed. For instance, can we store and reuse the carbon dioxide that we still produce and put it to good use? So the energy transition will be complex. It will have many, many different sources of energy, and we will need to combine those in the right places and in the right ways to make sure that we don't only move our cars, but we also can still you know, uh, produce energy enough for our industries, such as steel, um, such as cement, you know, building industry, also um, heavy transport, which really requires a lot of energy. Absolutely. And, and you had mentioned a little bit, but we still do need certain types of energy for things like moving our cars. And there's industries such as the oil and gas that clearly have a different form of energy than electricity. So how do those industries such as oil and gas play a role in that energy transition? And how can they possibly declare a net zero when they produce fossil fuels? Yeah, that's really interesting uh, paradox that's happening right now, isn't it? So you have really large oil and gas companies, particularly in Europe, where there seems to be a bit more urgency around this topic that are saying, look, we will also be net zero by 2050 or even sooner if we can make it happen. Now, how would they do that? It doesn't mean that all of a sudden they're not going to, you know, they're not going to produce oil and gas anymore. But what they will do is they will diversify the types of energy that they offer to the market. So, yes, they will use, for instance, natural gas to produce electricity. And, you know, um, electricity from natural gas is cleaner than from coal. So that's a very small step in the right direction. They'll also be building offshore wind farms. They have a lot of know-how of how you build offshore things, so why not build wind farms? They're investing in solar energy. They're helping with technology innovation around energy storage, batteries. You know, so they're really diversifying the portfolio and putting a lot of technology, technological know-how and also a lot of capital, which they do have, into a very diverse portfolio. So yes, they are helping. And then also, you know, they're very keen to take uh, their own production and make it much more energy efficient. So, so that, you know, if we still need energy from, from uh, oil and gas in the near future, at least we can produce it by consuming less energy in the production of it. 
So there's a whole lot of things that these companies are actually doing and they are declaring net zero, which means by 2050, they will, they will whatever they have left in terms of uh, emissions, they will offset them, bury them in the ground, build forests, you know, make sure that we're at net zero. No, that's fascinating. And it's great to hear that they are diversifying and, you know, c trying to make an effort in the right direction. But wh why should we believe these claims of these oil giants? Would they not be expected to slow down rather than speed up energy transition? Hmm. Yes, very interesting. So, of course, um, people have some distrust. And I think that's logical because for many, many years, of course, these oil companies have invested in exactly this, right? In fossil fuels, in oil and gas. They have, um, you know, taken it from the earth, sold it to customers, you know. What we shouldn't forget is that there was never a malicious intent in these companies to do something like ruin the climate. In fact, the fact that, you know, we have access to clean, to, to energy, such as oil and gas, you know, has also created a lot of wealth, has also, you know, brought, you know, economies up. And uh, but now the time has come, of course, now we fully understand the impact of fossil fuels on the climate, that these companies really out of also, again, a sincere belief that they need to do the right thing uh, are changing their game. And of course, that they're not doing this just for, I would say, social responsibility purposes. Governments are really strongly incentivizing, uh, you know, companies to go net zero. If you think about the European Union, you know, they talk about a European Green Deal which means the European Union incentivizes, you know, in all its national governments, and also the UK is doing the same, for these companies to go that direction. So there are policy incentives, there's good business sense also in diversifying the portfolio, and then they want to do the right thing as they always have. No, that's a very good point that you bring up, that there was no malicious intent for them to harm the environment. And I think that that's something that many people think of when they think of these oil giants, you know, they're profiting off of fossil fuels, which in turn hurt our environment. And so they kind of go hand in hand, but I think it's an interesting point to address that, you know, they are trying to help the planet just as much, you know, as other areas. And it's great to hear that there's pressures and incentives coming from uh, governments and, and outside entities. And so could you give us some examples of energy innovations that are supported by oil and gas companies? Yes, absolutely. So I think I talked about uh, in, in, in the earlier um, uh, dialogue we had, I talked about, you know, oil and gas companies starting to look like electricity companies, right? So if you think about uh, Shell, who was one of the first companies, uh, you know, to really invest in these new elements in their portfolio, they have acquired a utility in the UK. They've also acquired fast charging stations for electrical vehicles, and they've acquired home batteries. And they're doing something very interesting, which is put those three things together to make sure that their consumers, who used to be motorists driving a car and now may have an electrical vehicle, you know, can get an end-to-end -end service from them, you know, all the way from uh, the home where they might have solar panels and they could store their own energy in a home battery, you know, to um, you know, to charging, um, you know, at a at an electrical. Um, pump, so to speak, uh, with Shell, and then also uh, whatever they still need as energy, acquiring that in the home from Shell. So you kind of have new propositions to consumers coming um, from a company that you wouldn't expect it from. You would expect them to sell gasoline, but in fact, they're selling electricity, both to the motorists and to the home. And I give the example of Shell, uh, but uh, BP is doing the same uh, in, the, in the UK. Um, other example would be BP exactly, um, they just announced um, a, a big uh, effort to build offshore wind uh, on the east coast of the United States together with a, a joint venture partner, Equinor. So here you have two uh, European uh, oil and gas companies that are heavily investing in offshore wind off the, the U.S. Uh, east coast. I think those are two examples. Uh, and I could give you more around hydrogen, uh, for instance. I mean, hydrogen buses are coming to California. And again, it's going to be the oil companies that have driven a lot of the innovation around this. How do you produce it? How do you produce it from green energy? How do you make hydrogen from green energy? And then also, how do you collaborate with automotive companies such that indeed we have hydrogen buses? Yeah. So these are three examples for you. No, those are those are great examples. And it's really great to hear that 
uh, currently, you know, these these large oil and gas companies are diversifying in a sustainable manner, that they're seeing the need for it and moving forward in that era. And it, it's often said that we are now in a digital era. And so how important are data and digital for the transition to that net zero? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, of course, because, you know, I work for IBM and we're a, a digital company at the at the heart, right? We, we deal with data and we understand just how important in this entire energy transition where our energy system is becoming more and more diverse, but also fragmented and complex to manage in that sort of a new energy system to really understand from data what is the, the demand for energy and what is the supply for energy and how do you match both is going to be extremely important. And it's very important, you know, it's even more important, I would say, as you know, we, we create energy from renewable sources, because as you know, you know, the sun and the wind are not constant. So if we're going to have a complex energy system, which also includes a lot of renewable sources, we really need the ability to analyze supply and demand, but also to predict and forecast and balance, you know, the energy system in a very correct way, such that, you know, we can keep driving our cars and buses, but also we can keep running our factories, the shipping industry, the aviation industry, who will all use a diverse set of energies that need to be managed at all time. So data are critical, um, you know, the ability to predict and balance is, 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 is paramount. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. It's it's not enough to just put these systems in place, but ensure that they will continue to work and that we have the right data to ensure that, that there is that constant flow of sustainable energy. And so we've talked about many aspects today, but do you see other important aspects for any energy transition that we haven't talked about? Maybe skills or people's perceptions and behaviors, or even the role of investors and government? Well, I mean, all of the things you mentioned are extremely important. But before we move off the topic of, uh, of digital, there's maybe one thing I would like to add, which is, you know, you talked before about would we believe, would we believe an oil and gas company that says that they can deliver green or clean energy to you? And um, so there's another digital element that's going to be very important, which is the ability to prove that you are actually using a renewable energy source or that you've used a clean technology. So I want to uh, add one more digital technology that plays a very important role here, which is that of blockchain. And blockchain helps you, you know, certify and, and give trust to your claims that you've produced your energy in a clean or a green way. So I would just like to add that as a digital technology, you know, and this ability to certify and verify as a consumer, you know, you will want that trust. So that's that's very important. And so now I mentioned the consumer. They have a very important role and, and maybe one of the, the most difficult challenges, of course, is our perceptions and our behaviors. Does everybody really understand what this energy transition is? Does everybody understand what is clean or green energy and what is not? And then am I willing to actually pay a premium if need to, you know, to, to, you know, to live a bit more cleanly? I think that's a, a very, you know, important human challenge, human dilemma. Um, you know, that we need to, to think about uh, and think about collectively, you know, with governments, with companies uh, and with the consumers uh, themselves. So I think that's one aspect I'd like to, to comment on. Again, awareness, incentives, very important, you know, for the government. They have an inordinate role in terms of how they can accelerate the transition, not just by stimulating um, companies to invest in a green portfolio, but also to stimulate innovation. Uh, because the International Energy Agency has just come out with a report that says we will need a lot more energy innovation still to meet net zero goals, particularly in terms of scaling it and scaling our infrastructure around it. So I would say, yes, our behaviors, our perceptions, our understanding and awareness, what is clean and green, are we willing to pay for it if we have to? And then secondly, uh, a very important role for, for government to put the right incentives um, and, you know, help us move to net zero. Dr. Sonia Van Ballart, leading sustainability solutions for IBM. We cannot thank you enough for your work and the work that IBM does. It's absolutely incredible and fascinating and something certainly that our global audience will absolutely love to hear. Thank you so much for bringing your insights today. We greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. My pleasure.